So hello, welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion. Now, number four is kind of a mess for us. I mean, that once we have algebraic substitution, it just comp makes everything just that much more complex. So let's take a look at example number five here real quickly. And just, uh, we're going to bring our power up from 0 to 2, x, and I'm going to kind of block this off a little bit if I can. And this becomes 1 plus 2x squared to the negative a half dx. This one I know is going to be a lot nicer. So let me teach you how to do it. How I know I can use algebraic substitution. I'm going to let my inside be u. The derivative is going to be 4x. Notice it's the x that I want. It's going to cancel with this. Up here, my derivative was 2. 2 doesn't cancel with x. So I know right away I have to use algebraic substitution up there. So we can do this one. Our u is 1 plus 2x squared. Our derivative is 4x dx, giving us dx is du over 4x. I am going to change my domain right away. When x is 0, u is 1. And when x is 2, u is, what's that, 1 plus 4, 8, 9. There we go. Yeah. So when we solve this one right here, let's see here. Uh, so when we rewrite it, we would have x, u to the negative a half, du over 4x. Again, those x's cancel out, which is what we want. And my new domain is from 1 to 9. Writing this out, we would get from uh, 1 to 9, I'm just going to clean it up, 1 over 4, u to the negative a half, du. Integrating it, we get 1 fourth, be careful, this becomes u squared times 2 over 1 plus, whoops, we don't need to plus c here, forgot about that. See, just get rid of it. From 1 to 9, we're going to evaluate that. And if you need to clean it up, this is 2 u, whoops, sorry, uh, cleaning it up, I can, re I can reduce, and that becomes 1 half u squared, and we evaluate that from 1 to 9. Doing our FTC, f of 9 minus f of 1, we get 1 half times 9 squared minus, and again, if you just plug 1 in here, that's just 1 half. So we would get 81 over 2 minus 1 half, or 40 in that case. I think it works out pretty nicely. Now, this is pretty easy to do, as you can tell. However, there are some that we don't want to ever integrate. We talked about this in yesterday's video. We always sketch absolute value. We talked about this one yesterday. So let's kind of see this again. Uh, I want, this is my absolute value graph. I know it makes my V, my check mark, but I need to find the vertex. To get the vertex, you just set your interior equation to zero. And that's going to give me one half. So if I were to sketch it, there's my one half. My domain is going to go from zero to two. I know what absolute value looks like. I just have to find the length. Well, of course, this length is one half. The distance from one half to two is three halves. There's my basis. If I plug 2 in here, I'm going to get 4 minus 1, which is 3. And if I plug 1 in, I'm going to get 2 minus 1, which is 1. So there's my areas. I just want to find the area of these two triangles right here. So my area is 1 half. The base of the first one is 1 half times the height, which is 1, plus 1 half. The base which of the second one, which is 3 halves, times this height, which is 3. Do not simplify, just leave that alone. And likewise for number four, number four is pretty easy, same thing. Uh, to get my vertex, again, I can just set that whole inside equal to zero, and we just get three. So if we graph this, there we are at three, our area is gonna go from zero to four. I can just draw my absolute value function. I wanna find the area of these two triangles. I gotta find the bases, the base here is three, the base here is 1. To get the heights, just plug it in. 4 minus 3 is 1. Plug in 0. Be careful, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, but we want the absolute value, so this one has a height of 3 right there. So to get our integral, we're just, and we should really write it this way, it's just the area. 
one half. The base of the first one is three. It has a base of three. A height of three. The second one is one half. The base is one. And it has a height of one. And if you want, you can simplify. This is just nine halves plus one half, which is just five. But you can leave this okay as well. Very easy. All right, so let's get to tricks. All right, so these are the trig functions that we need to know. Remember, the antiderivative cosine is sine. The antiderivative sine is negative cosine. So we have our antiderivative rules, antiderivative rules for trigs here. So we either use power rule or trigs, and that's all we need to know. So let's try a couple of trig functions right here. Number eight, let's take a look here. If we take a look at number eight here, um, this is not use substitution. And the reason it's not use substitution is x is alone. X is inside of the cosine, but it is alone. So to get used to antiderivative of cosine is sine. So this just becomes a sine of X, and we evaluate that from 0 to pi over 2. Applying the fundamental theorem, this is called the FTC right here. And again, get tricky with it. We're going to get sine of pi over 2 minus sine of 0. Don't leave it. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So we just get 1. Easy peasy. Number 9, now take a look here. Here, x is not alone. Therefore, this is composite. And we're going to use u substitution. Our u is just going to be the inside, pi x. du is pi, because pi is just a constant, like 5, dx. So my dx becomes du over pi. So when I write this out, change my domain first. When x is 1 fourth, u is, plug it in, pi over 4. When x is 3 over 4, u is 3 pi over 4. Ugh. Tricks. From pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, we're going to be left with the secant squared of u, du over pi. Writing this out. Again, I'm going to put my pi on the outside here just to make it look nicer. From pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. And I can evaluate that. I'm going to get 1 over pi right there. The antiderivative secant squared, if I go up here, is tangent. So this is going to give me tangent of u from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4. And we just use our FTC f of 3 pi over 4 minus f of pi over 4. Now you just evaluate those. Plug them all in. 1 over pi. Let's see if we can do this in our head. What's the tangent of 3 pi over 4? Oh, that's not too bad to do. That's just negative 1 minus 1 over pi. What is the tangent of pi over 4? Well, that's just 1 right there. So if you notice, we get negative pi over 4, negative 1 over pi minus 1 over pi, or if you want to, negative 2 over pi. You can just leave your answer like this if you like. So let's try a few more trigolicious functions right here. Okay? Again, u is not alone, so we're going to use it right here. So here my u is going to be 2x squared. My du is 4x dx. Give me dx is du over 4x. Change your domain when x is 0 u is just 0. When x is root pi, don't worry about that, u is, well, root pi squared is just pi times 2, so it's just 2 pi. My favorite mathematical wrapper. That should be 2, that should be squared there. So when I rewrite this, my new domain, 0 to 2 pi, x cosine of u du over 4x. x is cancel, they have to cancel. Although we have to do algebraic substitution, these are not nice. Rewriting it, 0 to 2 pi, we get 1 over 4 cosine of u du, which we already know 1 fourth is sine of u. The der antiderivative cosine is sine, because sine's derivative is cosine. We evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi. We get f of 2 pi minus f of 0. And again, let's see if we can do the trig in our head. It's a lot faster if we can do it in our head. We're going to get 1 fourth the cosine of 2 pi 
is 1. Oops, sorry, the sine of 2 pi, excuse me. The sine of 2 pi is 0 minus 1 fourth here. And the sine of 0 is also 0. That's interesting. We just get an 0. Now, what's interesting, this is saying that the area is 0 there. All right, so go ahead and try the next couple uh, uh, on your own there real quickly. Um, number 11 here on your own. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump to number 12 because, you know, I can. I'm the teacher. Again, this is u substitution because we're using theta. It's kind of scary. u is 2 theta. Our du is 2 d theta. So we get d theta is du over 2. Changing your domain, when x is 0, u is just 0. When x is pi over 4, ready? The, uh, pi over 4 times 2 is just pi over 2. I'm going to rewrite our integral from 0 to pi over 2. And that gives us sine of u du over 2. So again, this is just going to give us 1 half sine of u du from 0 to pi over 2. And the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. So we get negative cosine of u. Now notice this, I'm going to put the negative on the outside there. That's okay. 0 to pi over 2. Uh, using the fundamental theorem, f of pi over 2 minus f of 0. And again, do the trig in your head. We get negative 1 half. What's the cosine of pi over 2? That's just 0. This becomes negative 1 half. What's the cosine of 0? 1. So if you want to, this is just one half for your final answer. Now I will give you a hint for number 11. Let u be the root x. This one. That's my inside. Which is x to the one half. And that should work for you. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.